It all began here in Hampton County for John Polk, who's running for State House District 122. In this special edition of Quentin's Close Ups, I speak exclusively with him one on one. So, we're sitting in a place which is really special for you Hampton Elementary. Just a few minutes ago, you read to a couple of kids here. And from what I understand, when you were here, you graduated with the last eighth grade class. So, what is it like to be back here now, John? Uh, that's correct, Quentin. Um, we're at Hampton Elementary in Hampton, South Carolina. And uh, my class was the last graduating class of the uh, eighth grade back in 1993. Um, it's special. I mean, I was here a couple of days ago, but to be in the library where I learned to, to uh, read as an early child and, and my love of history and to come back and read to uh, the students here is, is really a, is, is, um, a great um, opportunity. And as you know, home is here in Hampton. And I remember the media center specialist basically asking the students, what does it take to run for political office? And I know that you're running for House District 122. So as we sit here right now, do you know what it takes to get to Columbia? I think I do. Um, growing up here in Hampton and, and you know, in, in the school district here, it, you know, it took uh, great teachers and, um, that I had and people were pushing me, um, students, um, and student involvement on stuff too, but uh, with the teachers and family and church and everything right. else. I mean, Hampton, it, it, and I think this is your first time over here, it's a small community, everybody knows everybody, and you know, it, anything that people set out to do, a lot of times you get a, a lot of uh, backing and support, and I hope to get that um, as I run for this house district. I mean, Hampton is a great place to raise family, great place to live, but uh, we've heard uh, we're hurting uh, desperately over the last several years with the job losses, um, the infrastructure. And the infrastructure has been bad in South Carolina for a long time. Sure. But in Hampton County, it's particularly bad because people have just kind of forgotten about this part of the state. And also Jasper County. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's the, you know, we're not that far from Charleston, but we're far enough out that it's, people don't even know where we are. Or they know a little bit about it and they come over here, and as you know, we cell phone service today <laughs> trying to communicate with you That's hard. Um, in the roads and, and everything else. Right. So we need to work on that okay. to, uh, to help create uh, opportunities for people to stay in this area and not have to drive an hour and a half or, or 50 minutes or whatever to a job. Yeah. We know you as John Polk, the political candidate, but I know you from your days at the Charleston City Market. Uh, I want to take it back because from what I understand, you got your love from history right here in this media center, reading books and whatnot. And you went on to North Greenville University. And I'm wondering, when did the history bug bite you? Oh, goodness. That was, I would have to go even further back okay. to uh, Ben Hazel Elementary, probably, yeah. or just studying my love. And, and any teacher that would talk to you or tell you it was uh, presidential history, I was fascinating. I mean, I fascinated with that. I mean, from an early, on first, one of my first, and it is a pre presidential election, one of my right. first. Uh, presidential um, elections probably that I remember was the 88, which actually in this library, um, Miss Sweeney was the librarian at the time, and we had mock elections, and that was the Michael Dukakis and the, and the Bush election, and I got involved, and most of you don't have fourth graders involved in something like that, and I remember watching the uh, inauguration and just the history of all of that, and then coming in this very room and checking out books right. on from presidents to, to history of South Carolina or, or anything, but I've always been interested. And then later on, studied history at North Greenville, uh, went on to be a licensed tour guide with the city of Charleston, uh, which I still uh, do, and um, and even history over here in Hampton. We've got a great opportunity for a lot of historical stuff. I mean, this county's named for Wade Hampton. Um, he laid the cornerstone here in 1878. He had timber and property over here uh, that he proves with other well-known Hampton folks. So it's a great, um, uh, a lot of history in this part of the state. And let's continue down the history path because from what I understand, you actually went to church with President Jimmy Carter and his wife. I did. Um, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to, to go over to the Plains, and that's set up to anybody that, that wants to take that. And it was before he was sick. Right. And I took the, the um, opportunity, took off, and, and went over to the Plains and got to attend Sunday school, church, I got to meet him and Mrs. Carter, which is really neat because he was president when I was born. Yes. And, and to meet um, him in person and have an opportunity to talk with him and, and tell him a little bit about my love of history and my political ambitions. He wished me well. Yes. So. And, you know, let me go 
back down memory lane again to the city market. As you mentioned, you are a licensed carriage uh, tour operator, and you know, of course, you're a historian. What is it like to be John Pope, a historian and a tour guide? Um, I really don't. Know. I would. That's a, that's an interesting question. Um, I like to be John Pope. You know, that's kind of how it's set up because a lot of people think me as a you know historian, a mythological person. That I don't sound like this. I don't do this. As you as you can tell, being over here in Hampton, uh, this is my backyard. But um, I don't I don't put on a front. I think um, even with this house district, I'm dedicated to moving Hampton County and Jasper County forward, uh, and just just making a difference. That's the biggest thing. And continue to work. You know, doing tours. Um, you know, people say, well, "How's that going to affect?" You know, you're uh, driving back and forth. If you'll be in Columbia and all this. Well, it will work. Uh, I'm young enough. Um, it needs to be done. And it's a shame that you have to, and I love my, the opportunity to work down in Charleston, but it's a shame that people like me and other folks have to travel the job opportunities. And some people even travel, there's folks in Brunson, which is just a neighboring community that I grew up in, right. uh, about six miles from here. They get up at 4.30 in the morning, get on a bus, drive, but the bus takes them to Hilton Head. Right. It's about an hour and a half, two hours sometimes, they get off go to work, work 12 hours, and get back on that bus and come back. Now, if it's a young man, a young family, they have no time to spend with their children. They have no time to come to PTO, no time to get involved in the community. Right. And, and you know, you that shouldn't be the case. There's children in this school that we're sitting for you that on Friday afternoons they leave, and the next meal they get might be when they come back on Monday. And a lot of people don't realize that. Poverty is still an issue in the state. It's still an issue in this district. And I, I, you know, you got teachers, you got good teachers, um, like Tracy Preston at, at Brunson Elementary that has taken initiatives to help that. And um, um, teachers and principals that make sure that they have some a bag lunch. And it's not that, you know, you'll hear people say, oh, well, they're, um, the parents are doing this and that and other. No, you've got people working two or three jobs. Yeah. And, and, and not necessarily, and there's people in this county that still don't have running water. And I know that's kind of a shock because, you know, coming from Charleston and other folks you've right. interviewed, right. And, and, you know, I'll be glad to take you around and show you some of that, and it just blows people's minds. Wow. And on a state level, there, sh there should be no way in this day and age in 2016 that we have that, especially with our children. Right. And, and that's one thing, have initial set up, there's, there's surplus on this right. that we could do to at least help. And, and you know, a lot of these Republicans on, on some things want to talk about the funding and all this, but also, also if they, they claim that, but altogether they claim they're Christian. And, and it's that is a, a main thing, too. If you claim to be that, you need to look out and see what uh, Jesus did for people. And I know that people don't want to get involved in that politics and religion, but if you claim to be that on one thing and stuff, you need to help folks like that. And it's a shame that you've got young children in this school, in Brunson Elementary, in this county, in this district, in, in Hampton, in Jasper, that, that should be an issue. And that should be, that's not a political issue. As human beings, that should be something that we take to, to help our, our better man and help people move forward and, and just get them where they are like me, you know, coming in and uh, want to run for office to help the people of this county and this district. And, you know, from my understanding, too, I want to take you back down memory lane because you first got your job with the tour guide and whatnot after you saw an advertisement in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Talk to me more about that. Well, I worked for the University of South Carolina, Salkahatchee, with a grant program. I've been interested in education and helping young people uh, for a long time, and that kind of fizzled out. Um, the grant wasn't refunded, okay. and I needed um, to find some course. Even then, there was not too much around here, so I uh, so I had to post a career and, and applied and, um, and kind of started my carriage days yes. um, 10 years ago now. Wow. And what is the biggest difference between now and 10 years ago in your mind? With carriages or just, I mean, a lot of things have changed because technology's changed. You know, now, especially with the given tours, you've got applications, you've got all this stuff that you did, and then if people don't necessarily feel they need to hire a licensed tour guide. And that, that whole debate oh, yes. recently about the freedom of, of speech and should you be licensed to do that, which I think you should. Okay. Um, you, know, you have to be a license to get your hair cut. I mean, my mother's a hairdresser. She'll tell you all that. Uh, you have to have a license to do this and that. No, that's not a license of freedom of, of speech. Now, if you want to go out and give people free tours there, that's one thing. But um, 
this things have changed with technology, the rules and regulations um, with, with Charleston in general. You know, driving. When I drive in in the morning, it is chaos. It, Ten years ago, traffic was bad, but not as bad as what it is coming into West Ashland. And then this morning, y'all had problems even getting out of Charleston sure. to come this way, right. uh, what I understand. And so, um, you know, that, that uh, things have just changed in general and, and with the uh, population and people coming in and out. And, and I wish they would shift that and come this way. We've got all kinds of things over here they yes. come through history-wise. I don't know how horse and carriages work in downtown Hampton, but uh, you could have initiatives to have things because this area of the state, um, General Sherman came through. Right. You've got a lot of war between the state's history. Um, Harriet Tubman came through this county. Um, you've got a lot of uh, all kind of history here. And we also on major transits. Uh, we're not that far from I-95. Right. 278 still runs yes. down from if you're leaving out of Augusta. We get a lot of traffic doing the, the between the uh, masters and the uh, heritage because they leave Augusta and then usually take 278 down the hill. Right. So if somehow we could uh, learn to latch on that somehow, that could at least give us some industry, at least for maybe a week or so, uh, to do something and promote something. You know, we do have the Watermelon Festival. Yes. Um, that's coming up in June, and that's been a, a, a big thing for years. Yeah. They always say every political candidate, I know you've interviewed a lot, but if they run on the state level, they need to come to the Hampton Water, Watermelon Festival. That's where Mendel Rivers got his start years ago in 1940. Right. Strong Thurman's been here, Fritz Hollins, governors, congressmen, and as you know, Congressman Clyburn's our congressman in this district. Right. So that, that used to be a big, big festival. Describe to me the following one word, the Young Democrats of South Carolina. Leadership. Because you became a representative for Hampton County. Leadership. Where are you emotional with that job? Um, I'm excited about it, um, and, and it was uh, given to me, and it's going to help a lot in what I'm doing. Sure. I had people joke, they said, what does young mean? Because uh, uh, I don't know what the, the age bracket on that is between 18 and 39. Right. I'm still in that age bracket. <laughs> but, um, it's going to take a lot of work because this area is highly Democrat, but we've kind of been complacent over the years. Same thing with this district. Um, things have kind of just been stagnant, right. and we need to get more involved, especially with the Democratic Party in Hampton because we've been a strong uh, county with the Democratic Party. But it's interesting because if you look at the Republican primary recently, how many people have voted in the Republican primary here? Versus and then also people vote for Trump in right. Hampton County. And I didn't think I would see, see that hot but number, wow. um, period. So, But, um, yeah, I'm involved in that with the young uh, Democrats, the Sea Island chapter, right. and been, as you said, appointed as the uh, representative for Hampton County. Yeah, yeah. Working in Congress was? Um, that was right, well, that was between the carriages and Salt and Hatch. That was only a, about a year stint. I did. I worked for a congressman. And that's one thing I think I could bring to the table. Um, as you probably know, doing some of your research, I worked for both parties. I was a page for Senator Thurman in right. high school. Saw the picture um, I later went on and worked for Congressman Gresham Barrett, right. a Siddle grad from the upstate. Um, started out with legislative affairs. Went on to uh, work with military affairs and uh, district grant work and stuff in the district. Okay. And that's the thing, you know, Democrat, Republican, it's helping people. You know, I think for years, Senator Thurman and Senator Hollins did, and even before some of these other House members years ago, we had people that looked out and they care less about, um, you know, the, working the way up, trying to, you know, be vice president or whatever, or governor or whatever. They, they worked in them and they um, saw that they needed to retire, they retired, and they did what they did for the people. And I think that's what we need somebody in this area again to do that, because I've helped people of all walks of yes. life. You know, people say, oh, you're a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm a progressive, you know, and, and moving um, District 122 forward on a lot of stuff, you know, and we need somebody to fight. You know, we've had people up there in the past or our current legislative is kind of complacent, sits back, it doesn't uh, fight the fight. You know, go to the well, argue the point, then you can come back and bring to your district, you know, I at least try to fight for it. I at least, you know, we had a plant here at Western House that was, Oh, yeah. That was that plant was so big here. It started in 1940, 1941. I mean, my great grandfather they got him out of the sharecropping business to work there. My grandfather, my grandmother worked out there briefly. My great aunt, my daddy, uh, friends, families, stepdads, uh, 
my mom's boyfriend worked out there until recently. I mean, just until they closed it, and there was nothing that I, that I saw in person that anybody fought to keep that plant. And they, they lost, I don't know how many jobs out there. And that was a vital part of this community. I mean, we don't have too much here anymore. When that went, it was, it was terrible. And, and, you know, we are on the, on the I-95 corridor. Of course, we're in that part of that corridor shame as well. Right. But there's opportunities, land over here. One thing with cell phone service. I mean, we need uh, cell phone towns. Yes. I mean, we need it because if you've got that. That will in increase business because why would you come here and, like, you couldn't even get a signal right? or trying to call or what have you. Right. And, and that will start off trying to help industry. Things I think, and there's also the education stuff right. and things coming down from the state that the governor has vetoed over the years. But and she's from Bamberg; she knows this area, she knows the poverty, she knows this stuff, you know. And and I'm not running against her on this. I've I've, I've been um, and I'm happy with her, and I think she was did a great job with leadership with the flag situation um, after that terrible shooting in Charleston and some other things. But overall, we desperately need. Help, and we need somebody to fight sure. and and bring things moving forward because change always scares people. And I'm not, you know, I'm not coming on change this, change that, but just move forward to get us out of this idle state. And it can be done. It can be done. So I, you know, I ask for uh, everyone's vote in, in District 122. The primary is June 14th. Right. And then uh, when I win, I'm being okay. optimistic. We've got a general election in November. Okay. Describe to me, Lieutenant Governor Motley. <laughs> to talk about my, my blue tape beagles, that's a whole nother story in itself. She came to me unexpectedly about two years ago with my mother adopting her from the animal shelter for my little niece. And I was back and forth, and, and Molly took a liking to me. Okay. And so I deemed her the lieutenant governor, because I have a nickname as governor and right. senator and all right. that kind of right. stuff. Dating back to my days, even uh, as a student body president of Wade Hampton High School, right. involved in the student council here at Hampton Elementary. And so she, uh, she's she been a part of my life and, and goes uh, all over the place. Yes, I know. Uh, she's not here today. Right. I'm um, but she's out there in the country. You know, okay. she's, she's out in the country with her, her companion buddy, country dogs. They're running around. But, uh, yeah, she actually had the opportunity to meet uh, Lieutenant Governor McMaster a few weeks ago. That's she good. wears those pearl necklaces. Right. She was confirmed in St. Michael's. And, oh, wow. Even though she's a Baptist. But she's <laughs> blessed in the Episcopal Church. Right. And, you know, of course, we know you. I mean, you're a political candidate. You are a tour guy. But at the end of the day, who is John Pope as a person? As a person, uh, I don't think a lot of people really know me as a person. They know of me. They know the, 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 the uh, character uh, that uh, they think I am, a mythological person or what have you. Okay. But deep down, you know, I'm a caring, loving person. And anybody that personally knows me knows that. They know I'll give anything. Uh, for anybody. I mean, I had an opportunity, but I didn't have an opportunity. I had a situation, um, not a bad thing, but the other day I had to help some people out, some okay. friends, and I didn't say anything about it, the court situation. I went and spoke on their behalf, and I've done a lot of stuff for folks, and I'm not trying to self-glorify myself by all means, but um, overall, um, you know, I honestly care for my fellow man, and I'll do anything for it. Now, on the opposite side, I can be trifling at times, and um, Pain in the behind, as you know, you've dealt with me uh, outside that deli and driving on the carriage and some of the off cuff stuff that I've said. And, <laughs> and that's and why things. we miss you in the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. I'll be back soon. Yeah. But um, uh, I'm, I guess, uh, all around. Um, I don't think there's a middle ground with me. You either like me or you don't. And I think uh, people will tell you that. That's I don't think there's any middle ground with, with John Paul. <laughs> so that, that is awesome. <laughs> Well, John Pope, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Well, thank you, Quentin. I'm glad to have you in, in Hampton yes, this morning. Yes, yes. And hope to uh, you come back for the Watermelon yeah, Festival and, and, um, and, and uh, anything else. So thank you so much. And thank you. I appreciate this. Thank you.